okay hello guys uh, welcome to another part of the fundamentals of programming uh, this part we're going to be talking about the evolution of programming in brief okay uh, remember in the last video I told you guys I'm going to do a full video of uh, evolution of programming how programming came from machine language to the stage where it is today okay but on this video I'm just going to make a brief illustration of what programming language is all about and how uh, it came to the existing uh, or should I say modern stage that it is today okay so that's what I'm going to do in this video now you should have it in mind that everything I'm doing in this video is just a brief concept because there are a lot of other things to talk about that I'm not really going to point out here in this video so definitely I'm still going to make uh, a full video if possible uh, a series about the evolution of programming because we're going to see different programming languages and we're going to see their syntaxes and we're going to see how they were able to overcome some of the issues in the low level language and how they are uh, those issues have been uh, handled in the high level language so there are uh, actually a lot of things to talk about when it comes to the evolution of programming so speaking about the programming languages okay uh, from the previous video we've seen that when we talk about program programs are simply set of instructions that are given to the computer to perform some task okay so in where we said instruction instruction are simply commands okay so let's take this scenario an example like for instance if i want to give you as a, a person or as a human i want to give you some instruction and maybe you don't understand my language maybe i speak french and you don't understand french and i give you instruction in french how did you think you're going to process and carry out those instructions is it possible no i don't think so except if there is somebody that can tell you that okay this is what i said or this is what the instruction i gave is all about then you cannot carry out the instruction so it's same thing when we talk about programming language or programs when a, a, a programmer instructs the computer on what to do so take for instance uh, take for instance uh, you are the human being here as a person you want to communicate with the computer okay so communicating with the computer not just maybe telling the computer anything but rather giving the computer instruction that means you want the computer to execute some commands for you now the problem here now is that the computer does not really understand the human language but rather understands its own native language which is called the machine code so the machine code is a computer programming language consisting of binary or hexadecimal instruction which a computer can respond to directly okay so like uh, uh, what I said earlier the for the programmer to communicate effectively with the computer it have to communicate with it or give it command in machine code this simply indicates that if the programmer wants to tell or instruct the computer on anything it have to put those instruction in a series of binary codes or hexadecimal codes okay and these binary codes are a series of uh, functions or a series of data okay now they give the computer or instruct the computer on what to do at the same time some of this uh, series of binary code represents some of the internal components or uh, uh, that makes up the system architecture that is the computer architectures like the ports the uh, uh, the processor and uh, a lot of other things within the computer okay now not just uh, not just that when we talk about binaries binaries we know they consist of uh, uh, zeros and one which are often referred to as bits so uh, for so as a programmer you need to understand some of all these concepts before you are able to write uh, instruction for the computer to follow okay so looking at this whole thing for a programmer to now instruct the computer you have to agree with me that the programmer needs to be very very conversant or good with the uh, uh, binary uh, operations okay you need to understand the various binary interpretation and can uh, uh, convert uh, binary or convert 
maybe decimal or other forms of data into their binary forms so that is how the the machine language story is okay so this makes it very very difficult for for uh, 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 a user or a person to learn how to program or how to write instruction because you have to learn all these things to the core before you can instruct the computer on what to do so due to this fact on a, in an attempt to make programming easy in an attempt to make uh, communicating or giving the computer instructions very easy that is what gave birth to the uh, uh, the other programming language that is known as the assembly language okay in the assembly language they try to advance the way the programs or the instructions have been given to the computer that means they don't really write the assembly language like the machine code anymore what they do is they you they will have to represent some of all this binary uh, 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 series of binary codes in what we call symbols and mnemonics okay symbol and mnemonics so with these symbols and mnemonics uh, they, they represented some of the binary uh, instructions okay so programmers now cannot write the programs or cannot instruct the computer using assembly language instead of the machine code which is actually more easier to learn but the the constraint here now is the computer does not understand this assembly language the computer understand just that machine code which is the native language of the computer okay so now how were they able to you know uh, uh, make the computer understands uh, the the assembly language they did that with the help of another program called the assembler okay now for the record where we were defining uh, assembly language assembly language is simply a type of low level language that is intended to communicate direct with the computer's hardware okay and it consists of symbols and mnemony like i said before now okay so that is just the assembler you can see that the assembly language is also a low level language okay now why is it also a low level language why is it not categorized as maybe a middle level language or something like that okay it is because the assembly language like from the uh, uh, definition you have on your on your screen okay it, it tends to communicate directly with the computer hardware okay that means it does not really uh, uh, require much interpretation by the computer because most of it most of the instruction that will be written in the assembly language uh, have uh, the machine architecture in mind okay what i mean by that is when uh, you are writing assembly language assembly language also understand how the machine internal structure is how the micro architecture of the computer is okay so that is why it's called a low level language because it is closer to the machine code okay so like i was saying how they were able to you know make the computer understand the assembly language too is with the help of another program called the uh, assembler okay this is how it is okay now this from this side you can see this is the um, assembly language source code okay then we have the machine language or the machine code itself here now for the computer to be able to understand the assembly language there is a translator called the assembler that translates the code written in assembly language into the machine code okay so that is how the they were able to make the computer also understand the assembly language okay then uh apart from the machine code and the assembly language which are categorized as low level language we also have the high level language where 
all the program most of the programming language that we're dealing with today falls under okay like on your screen you can see uh, an example of a high level language written in basic okay you can see uh, private you can see button you can see if you can see s if you can see a b and you can see system you can see as these are uh, elements of your normal spoken language uh, English precisely okay so when we write programs in this natural language or things that are closer to natural language or closer to human language okay we say we are writing program in high level language okay an example of all these high level language program are most of the program you you're using today like your java your javascript your python your uh, basic and the likes of it okay so uh that is what high level language is okay so from the definition you have on your screen high level language are considered as a high level language because they are what they are closer to the human language and they are very different from the machine code okay so they are easier to learn too okay that is one of the advantage of the high level language they are easier to learn because since they look like the human spoken language it will be easy for you to comprehend what these instructions are but if uh, they are uh, written in just those machine code which are a series of uh, binary instructions it will be difficult for you to tell what is what in the, your uh, source code okay so that is just it now in a chart to illustrate further uh the difference between high level and low level you can see from my screen you see the hardware the computer hardware you see the machine language sitting directly on top of the machine hardware and the assembly language on top of it okay now this assembly language and machine language they 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 understand or they are closer to the hardware the, com the computer hardware and that is why we refer to them as low level languages why the other ones that are not closer to the machine or the hardware but they are more closer to human spoken language they are referred to as a high level language you can see example your fortran your c your pascal your oo visual languages your python your javascript your c plus plus your c sharp uh, your dart your go and a lot of programs that you use or that you are hearing their name today they are categorized as the high level language okay now the question is uh, we talked about assembly language and we talked about how they are uh, uh, translated into machine language so that the computer can understand them what about this high level language how will the computer understand them they also have uh, another other forms of translator rather that uh, translates them into their machine equivalent and these are uh, interpreter and compiler okay so generally when we talk about translators translator are simply uh, programming language processors that modify the computer program from one language to another okay usually the machine their machine equivalents okay now why i added that phrase their machine equivalent is because uh when we talk about translators translators does not really uh, uh, uh end with the compiler and interpreter and assembler because in modern day programming languages and modern day programming we have what they call a transpiler as well okay and a transpiler does not really uh, 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 compile into machine equivalent rather a transpiler can compile a uh, programming language source code written in one high level language to another high level language okay for instance if we're converting uh, maybe we're talking about javascript uh, we have some modules within a javascript that uh, uh, maybe written in uh, ex6 and above then sometimes we need uh, things like a uh, uh, the Babel compiler to uh, compile them into uh, a lower form of JavaScript. Okay, now uh, I simply I 
promise to keep this very simple some of us might not really understand some of the things i'm talking about right now or some of us can actually relate with them but let's just say uh for instance you have fortran and c there which are categorized as a uh, high level language now when you have uh compiler that translates or uh, uh, when you have a translator rather that translate from fortran to c fortran is a high level c is a high level now it's not translating from fortran to maybe a machine code but it's translating from one a high level to another we simply refer to those things that transpire though there are some debates that uh, even some of these people that uh, abuse some of these transpiler some of them would not still agree with you that they should be referred to as transpilers rather they, they are also called uh, compilers okay so it's just opinion based too because whenever we talk about anything on the internet or anything it most of the things you see are opinion based okay so it's just uh, opinion uh, for now okay so but when we talk about translators that is just what translators mean translators are simply programming language processors that modify computer program from one language to another okay so that is a translator okay now if we we'll go further to illustrate the high level language and the assembly language and how they have been translated into their machine equivalent or machine code okay now you can see the assembly language there from the illustration uh uses the assembler to uh, uh convert its code its source code into the machine code but if you look at the high level language the high level language can either use a compiler or use an interpreter now this these two are both translators that translate from high level language to their machine equivalence or machine code but they do the work in different ways okay now for a compiler, a compiler will compile the entire source code uh, into uh, an object code before execution, while the interpreter will analyze the source code uh, statement by statement, that means line by line, and execute them as it is as it is reading them. Okay, so if I have maybe uh, let's assume I have five lines of code or five lines of instruction that I'm about to execute, what a compiler will do, a compiler will first of all translate the entire five lines of code before executing them. But for interpreter, interpreter will first of all translate the first line, execute it. When it's done, it goes to the second line, translate it and execute it and so on and so forth till the entire program is uh, completely translated. Okay, so both of these work uh differently but they do the same thing okay and they also have their advantages and disadvantages okay so maybe uh uh subsequently we might talk about uh the major differences between a compiler and an interpreter okay so that is how program translators uh, work and that is how a high level language can be converted into the machine code uh, at the same time the way assembly language can be converted into the machine code so uh, i think this is all for this video now in the next uh, part of this series we're going to talk about the difference between uh, softwares and programs uh, some of the things that you see in uh, uh, software engineering because like when you're learning programming a programming is simply a prerequisite to software engineering if you want to learn how to develop software okay so that is what programming is just like the elementary part of software engineering okay so we're going to see some uh, things about software development we're going to see uh, 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 the difference between softwares and programs we're going to illustrate some things uh, about about how a software works okay so and don't forget also that uh, the evolution of programming that we just discussed is just a brief so we are still going to make a complete series or a complete video about the entire evolution of programming so thank you for watching and see you in the next video